And well, hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today's video is a bit of a mix of things. It is a TBR video for May and June. It's a currently reading and a read-along announcement. I'm going to start with the read-along announcement because that's the bit I'm most excited about. And it is a read-along for Ken Follett's The Pillars of the Earth. This is going to be hosted by Andrea from Infinite Text and myself. Andrea's channel will be linked in the description box. And we are going to read this throughout the months of June and July. This is a, quite a big book, so we decided to spread it out over eight weeks, just so everyone can keep up. Uh, well, just so I can keep up, let's be honest here. Andrea gets through a lot of books very quickly, uh, so she's very kindly decided to slow down the speed a bit for me. Now, Andrea has made an announcement video for this as well, and I'm going to link this down below. And in her announcement video, she goes into more detail about the book itself. The reason for that is that she has already read The Pillars of the Earth, so this is going to be a reread for her, whereas for me, it's a first time. I have not read any Ken Follett books, and this is arguably his most famous one. I'm very excited about this. I know very little about the book other than that it is about the building of a cathedral in medieval England. I think. That's the extent of my knowledge about the Pillars of the Earth, so you better go and check out Andrea's announcement video if you want more details. But I really hope that you are going to join us for this eight week long reading adventure. The read along is going to be taking place on Goodreads, so we have a special Goodreads group for that, also linked in the description box of course. All you need is a Goodreads account and this book and you can join us. And of course there is a link where you can buy the book in the description box as well. Basically, just check out the description box for all of the information you could ever want about this read-along. I think this is going to be a lot of fun and I hope many of you are going to join us with this. Now on to part two of this random spring video. I say spring, it's actually pretty cold here, hence why I'm sitting there in my warmest jumper. Anyway, the second part is my currently reading and I just want to quickly chat about two books that I'm currently reading. The first one is Pyramids by Terry Pratchett. I've been reading this one for a while. It's taken me quite a long time to get through it, mostly because the pages are falling out. Yeah, so about, about 30 or so pages have just come loose from the book, meaning and that I can't really read it in bed, I can't really take the book with me anywhere. I have to sit at a table where I can catch the pages as they fall out of the book, otherwise, you know, they'll just end up everywhere and I really don't want to lose a page, that would be the most annoying thing. But I'm just over halfway through and it's it's fun, it's kind of a set in a ancient Egypt type society, as you can possibly tell from the title, and it's all about the magical power of pyramids. Uh, it's it's really fun, it's just like all the other Terry Pratchett novels, just very enjoyable and incredibly clever. The other book that I'm currently reading that I've only started quite recently is The Long Song by Andrea Levy. This I picked up in a charity shop after seeing the BBC adaptation of this. I think the BBC ran a two or three part adaptation over the Christmas period, I want to say, and I watched that and I was completely blown away by that adaptation. It was so good. So when I saw this book in a charity shop, I had to get it and the book has not disappointed me. This is a historical novel set in the 1830s. Well, it starts off in the 1830s. It kind of moves through the decade as the book goes along in Jamaica and the narrator is a woman named July who grew up as a slave on a sugar plantation in Jamaica. And if this sounds really heavy and dark, it kind of is but it also kind of isn't. Andrea Levy has really beautifully towed the line between making an engaging and in parts absolutely hilarious story with a very 
fun main character while also not downplaying the brutalities of slavery. What makes this book so, so clever is the narration style. So July is writing this book from her own perspective as an older woman. So she recounts her life, you know, it's, it's one of those fake memoirs. But another person who has input on the story is her son, who's a book editor and publisher who's planning to publish this book. So there's several levels of unreliable narrator, of unreliable memories and of just making up bits. It's a very, very clever book. It's very, very funny. It's very, very heartbreaking. It has got all of the things that a book has to have uh, to make me feel engaged with it. And it does it very, very beautifully. I'm in love with this book so far and I just hope it continues in the same way. I'm only about a third of the way through. So far, I can tell that the adaptation has stuck very closely to, to the narrative of this book. So if you haven't seen that yet, but you have read the book, I will encourage you to watch the BBC adaptation, if you can get your hands on it. Next, let me show you what I'm planning to read for the remainder of May and into June. So the first book I've already spoken about is The Pillars of the Earth. I will start this one on the 1st of June with Andrea and hopefully all of you and that is a, as I like to say, that is a chonker of a book. So for the rest of my TBR I have chosen shorter books that hopefully I'll be able to read in between getting through this. The first of those is another Ian Forster. Uh, there are only two Ian Forster novels that I haven't yet read and this is one of them, Where Angels Fear to Tread. Uh, Katie from Books and Things read this recently and she really liked it so I mean, I know I'll, I know I'll love this anyway, but seeing her read it made me want to read it. So here I am. This is a, quite a short one. All the Enforcer novels are quite short, actually, and I know nothing about the plot or the setting, and I'm not going to look it up before I read this, because I want to enjoy this just purely as a story without knowing anything about it beforehand. So far with the other Ian Forster novels that I've read, I've always thought of them as spring and summer books and I don't know why, maybe it's because they talk about travel a lot, maybe I connect summer with travel in my mind even though I never go anywhere. So I just hope the weather catches up soon and becomes nice and spring-like and I can read this on the beach maybe. From a nice summer read to a 20th century dystopian classic, my next pick is A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. Or Burgess, I honestly, I, I still don't know how to pronounce that name. Sorry, Brits. I've been on a bit of a dystopian trip lately. I mean, I say that. Dystopian fiction is one of my favourite genres anyway, so this is nothing new. And I enjoy mid-century dystopian novels in particular, and this is one that I haven't read yet. I've heard a lot of things about it, not all of them good. I've heard it's quite heavy going, it's quite difficult to read. Well, at least it's short. So we'll see if I enjoy this as much as I typically do with mid-century dystopian fiction. And finally, because I always have one pick that's just a little bit out of my comfort zone, this is very much out of my comfort zone and it is another poetry collection. Every now and again I try reading poetry and I always fail, but I got this collection of poems by Rainer Maria Rilke sent to me by Andrea. And uh, this is a bilingual edition. It has one page of German and then one page of English. And of course I'll be reading the German half. I've always found German poetry much easier to digest than English language poetry. I can read a Goethe much more easily than I can read a Shakespeare or even a, a, a contemporary poet. Maybe German just functions better as a language of poetry. Hot take, I don't know. But I'm willing to give poems another go, and uh, these are nice and short, so hopefully I will get on with this one. Uh, Andrea gave me this book because she herself is a huge fan of Rilke, and it's kind of embarrassing that I, as a German, have not read any of his works yet. So it really is about time to get into that. And my final pick for my TBR is on my Kindle, so I haven't got a cover to show you, but there you go. The power of editing. 
This is Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence and I have recently bought this on Kindle because it was on offer for like £2. I'm not sure if it still is but check it out, it might still be on that offer. Grey Sister is the second in a trilogy by Mark Lawrence, uh, the first book of which is called Red Sister. And Red Sister is a fantasy novel set in a convent. I mean, of course, it's like a cool, magical ninja convent. It's not just, you know, praying and fasting. And our main character is a novice in that convent, and she's a young girl in Red Sister. I predict she's going to grow up throughout this trilogy of books. I really love Red Sister. It's so not my genre. I'm, I'm not really into high fantasy, generally speaking, but I really, really loved Red Sister. I've spoken about it in several videos, and the thing that I enjoyed the most about it is that this is a story that's set in a world of women. Yeah, all of the nuns are female, and they hold so much power in this world, and it's just a nice bit of escapism. On top of that, it's also a really fun magical adventure story, and I highly recommend you read Red Sister and then the rest of the trilogy, if that sounds appealing to you. I haven't started Grey Sister yet, it is on my Kindle, it's waiting for me, and I'll get started on that once I finish one of the books I'm currently reading. That was it for today. Let me know if you have read and enjoyed any of the books that I've spoken about. Let me know if you will be joining in with the Pillars of the Earth read-along. Please do. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And Andrea knows so much about this book. She, I mean, she's a librarian. She knows how to do research. And I just can't wait to discuss all of the little intricacies, all of the details of this book with her and hopefully with some of you guys as well. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!